Hello, everyone. It is great to be here. This is actually the first time that I've ever been in China other than a brief layover in the airport. So I want to thank everyone and the conference organizers for making me feel welcome here. It's been an amazing week so far. I was listening to some of the talks today, and I was thinking about what we do as professionals. And I think sometimes we create such amazing technology, but we oftentimes make it so complex that it's hard for new users to get onboarded to the platforms that we create. Now, luckily, as part of my job on OpenShift at Red Hat, is I get to go out and talk to developers. And I try to explain these complex technologies in a way that they can understand. And it reminded me of a great quote from Dennis Ritchie. Dennis created the C programming language, also was instrumental in Unix. And he says, Unix is very simple. It just needs a genius to understand its simplicity. So in true open source fashion, I forked his quote, and I created my own version of it. Kubernetes is very simple. It just needs a genius to understand its simplicity. So that's what I want you to take away from today's talk. So how do we make things that are complicated and very powerful easy to use and easy for people to learn how to use? I looked at my own kids. I actually have four children. And I've noticed my kids use games to learn some of the most common things that we need to understand as humans. As humans, we are often attracted to games to learn complex things. If I think back to how I actually learned to count and the value of money, it was by playing Monopoly with my brothers and sisters. I wanted to beat them so bad that I had to learn how to count money so that I could win the game. Now, my kids use video games to learn everything from math to how to read using uh, flashcards, and they do it mostly on their mobile devices because it's fun. It makes it very easy and fun to learn very complicated things. And when I was growing up, I was the best two-finger typer on the planet. I could type so fast using the hunt and peck uh, methodology. But this was really holding me back from what I wanted to do because I couldn't look at the screen and type at the same time. So I really wanted to learn how to type. And I used a program called Mavis Beacon Teaches, Teaches Typing. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It was by a company called Broderbund, or, and I don't even know if they're still in existence. But they made learning how to type very fun. They would count your words per minute, and I was always trying to get, you know, 100 words per minute, then 102, and it, they figured out, you know, the most complicated key combinations and added those into the game so that you could learn these keystrokes. Now, today, there's different versions of this, typing instructor and things like that. And as I was preparing this talk, I also thought back, how did I even get into computers? Now, whether most of us want to admit it or not, we begged for our first computer to play video games. That's how we got into computers. It's kind of what we wanted to do. Mine was a Commodore 64, and yes, I did actually boot up the Commodore 64 and code that uh, KubeCon China basic program. But that's kind of you know, how I got into it, because I wanted to play games. I would actually read magazines and books that would teach you or have the instructions or the code for a game, and I would spend hours and hours typing in from these magazines and books just to play a game. Now, I grew up in a... Uh, I was lucky enough to have a computer, but we couldn't afford a disk drive or even a cassette drive. So as soon as I turned that computer off, all of that hard work that I spent programming that game would be gone. Um, but that's how much I wanted to play these games and to learn how to, to program. 
And so I was wanting to teach people about Kubernetes and containers. And it can be pretty mind-boggling to first jump into it. And I had this idea to create a video game to teach people what you can and can't necessarily do in Kubernetes and what the platform will actually recover from. And so there was three main things that I needed to, to find in order to create a game based on Kubernetes. The first thing I needed was a platform API or an application programming interface that would allow me to manipulate objects on the cluster itself. Now, luckily, Kubernetes knocks this one out of the park. The Kubernetes API is the first class citizen on the platform. Everything you can do, you can do through the API. And this even includes the famous kube control, kube cuddle, or kube CTL command line tool. It uses this API. So that one was definite good to go. The next thing I wanted was a client library. Even though Kubernetes provides an API, I didn't necessarily want to spend all of my time reading and parsing JSON documents and converting the JSON to objects and things like that. So I wanted a, a client library that would help me. Now, Kubernetes also knocked this one out of the park. They have official client libraries for Java, Python, Go, JavaScript, and even .NET. Who uses <laughs> .NET to talk to Kubernetes? I mean, we're waiting on Windows containers still. But yeah, if you're a .NET developer, you can absolutely use the um, client libraries. There's also a huge community of client libraries that are not official. And I, just, I think there's about 100 of them in most languages or frameworks that you want to use. The next thing I was looking for, I had never written a game before. And so I needed to find a game engine that would allow me to do the things that I wanted to do. And because I wanted a lot of users to be able to access it without having to install anything, that kind of narrowed it down a little bit to where I was looking for a web-based game engine, probably JavaScript. And so I actually settled on the Phaser game engine, which is a JavaScript um, library that will allow you to do physics and things like that inside of the browser. So the game that I started working on is, um, like I said, you saw that I had a Commodore 64. I kind of grew up in that 8-bit era. Is I wanted a video game that was kind of like a Wild West themed, where it would pop objects on the screen and you would shoot them. And so that's kind of um, what I wrote. So let's take a look at the super advanced architecture diagram. It's a very complicated application. It actually requires two pods. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, on the front end, you would have the, the user coming in to make a request. And on the front end pod, there's two frameworks I'm using. One is the phaser game engine. And then the code is actually using Node.js. And that Node.js code actually talks to a Spring Boot backend. That Spring Boot backend uses a community client library called Fabric 8. And it pulls Kubernetes resources and objects from your current namespace and then displays them, okay? And then if you add the correct permissions, you can actually delete things as well, right? And so this was to teach people that, yeah, if you destroy a pod, well, that's okay. The platform's gonna recover from that. But if you delete a service or something else, that may not be such a good thing to do, right? And so um, I'll go ahead and switch over to the demo machine. And I am very brave in that I'm going to try to demo this. But I would be remiss if I didn't point one thing out real quick. I am using the Linux operating system, Fedora 30, in fact. Um, I, and I think we're attracted as technologists to open source. That's why we're here talking about Kubernetes. So I would encourage everyone to give Linux another shot on the desktop. It's actually very pretty. I use it every day. So um, maybe keep that in mind. All right.
So let's go ahead. This is the back end system. I have five pods running. And I'll open the other screen here. And I'm just going to open up the game and explain what's going on. So it says KubeCon China 2019, Kubernetes the Wild West way. So the graphics are a little bit better than um, 8 bit. But down here at the bottom, you can see that it's going to tell you what's up. Like this is a service, the service was a front end. The next one's a pod, and it has the name, and it has the ID. So we can actually start shooting these. The mouse cursor, I don't know if you can see, actually turned into a, um, I don't know what you'd call that, a gun sight, I guess. Um, and it does have audio, and the audio is hilarious. Um, so, but let's go ahead and kill something here. Let's wait. Here's, I don't want to kill the front end. Let's kill the back end. Oh, I missed it. Don't want to kill that one. No. No, that's another front end. I want to kill the back end. There we go. There we go. And so that actually killed it, and this must have timed out because it's been um, up here sitting idle for a couple of hours. So let's reload it, and we'll see it actually deleting the stuff in, in real time here. Oops, missed it again. You can see my score is increasing, and when I miss a shot, it actually subtracts as well. Um, but that's kind of the, the game I wrote. It was a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I had never written a game before, and to be honest, I am a manager. I'm a director at Red Hat. So part of this was me just wanting to code again. Um, so I spent a couple of days creating this, this game. But this game is all on GitHub, github.com slash gshipley. And I would encourage you to maybe modify this to make it, the pods show longer. Let's kill the service. I'll kill the front end. And we'll kill the back end. Dang it. I'm not very good at this. There's the ingress. Another ingress. Where's the back end pod hiding? Another ingress. I'm sure you guys love watching me. Um, there, you can see it over on the right, that it actually did kill it, right? And then Kubernetes um, responds and, and scales it back up based off of the number of replicas that I've set on the replication controllers. So I had a lot of fun doing this. If we can switch back to the slides. And what I would suggest everyone do, if you want to kind of learn more about the Kubernetes API or to even onboard new developers at your company or operation staff onto Kubernetes, is make it fun for them. Maybe create a game. There's a lot of games you could do. One of the ones I've been thinking about is a, a chess match or even tic-tac-toe that's multiplayer. So like I could join a game and it would match me up with someone else and we each come in with our unique Kubernetes clusters and pass in objects IDs and the winner like destroys stuff on the other person's cluster to like learn how to, to do things. So there's a lot you can actually do. But the Kubernetes API is absolutely amazing and you should start looking at it to automate most of the things you do. That's the key um, for running any platform is to automate as much as possible and you can only do that with a nice API. Um, so if you have any questions or if you want to talk more about the Kubernetes API, I will be at the Red Hat booth directly after this for a little while. So just stop by and we can talk. But thank you for, for having me here. I really enjoyed it.